This year's European Championships in Laser Class in Gdańsk in Poland are full of Olympic medalists. And one of them, Pablo Scontides, silver medalist from Olympic Games in London. You're the only one from London here, I guess. Welcome, and uh, we're very happy you're here with us. Uh, thank you very much. It's, it's a pleasure. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm the only one. And gold medalist was Tom Slingsby from Australia, and uh, Mirgen Erasmus from Sweden was a bronze medalist. Uh, the introduction was not full. Pablo Scontides from Cyprus. We know that you are a superstar in Cyprus. I'm sorry I'm not starting with the sportive only, but you're the person with your own monument in Cyprus. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. It's, I mean, it's a great honor and uh, responsibility at the same time, but uh, a sweet one to have. And uh, people there know me and uh, they expect from me to always do well. And uh, I know that I'm not just uh, competing only for myself and uh, my family and my team, but also for uh, all people of Cyprus. And uh, that's a lot of times gives me a lot of motivation and I'm happy to do that. Well, I didn't have uh, opportunity to be in your place, but I've seen the photo. The monument is absolutely amazing and beautiful. With these expectations, it's very easy to say that you're meeting them or exceeding them. Like next year after the uh, Olympic medal, you became a world champion. After the Olympic medal in uh, London, I finished second in the world. In, second. Uh, yeah, yeah. after the Rio Olympic Games, That's I right. became Olympic champion. Yeah. It's a long career with uh, so many years in the top. How do you do this? Everybody says that it's not easy to, once you are at the top, to stay there. And especially in the laser fleet, that it's uh, very competitive. I'm already 30 years old, but I've been many years in the class. So I've seen the change of uh, generations, people stopping and newcomers coming. But I mean, it's, it's really nice that you are in this class, which is so competitive. And always you need to do your best on, uh, on a daily basis to be at your best shape, especially on the events that matter. Uh, when you were... Little Pavlos, little kiddo, have you imagined that your sailing career uh, can go that high? Yeah, I mean, what ignited the fire inside me was uh, 2004 Olympic Games in Athens. I was a uh, spectator for uh, the sailing event and uh, when I saw that everybody represent not only themselves but uh, their country, somehow that really ignited the fire inside me and I wanted to participate at the Games. And then slowly I realized that with the correct team of people uh, around me and I owe a lot to, to my success also to my team and to my coach uh, Jozo Jakelic, he's from Croatia. He's my coach since I was 16 years old, so 14 years now. He's like a second father to me. And uh, in the team, Tonči Stipanovic, Filip Jurisic, uh, you know, we've been training so, so long together and uh, we have really special bond also as, as friends. And uh, I mean, uh, this friendship will carry on also after we stop our career and that's I think it's uh, really special. Uh, we had the uh, opportunity and pleasure to question Tonči Stipanovic and he was mentioning a lot uh, benefits of sailing in this good group. I understand you spend most of the time in split, right? Yeah, or in split or we train uh, elsewhere if it's some uh, preparation come uh, somewhere else for a major championship, the Worlds or Europeans or uh, Olympic Games. And of course, we travel a lot to compete. But this year, uh, it was completely different for all of us, not what we, we used to be. Due to Corona situation, a lot of uh, lockdowns, quarantines, not much traveling, not much competition. But uh, it is what it is, and uh, we need to adapt. And it's a big challenge for uh, not just for Sportman, but for everybody. And where have you been when uh, all the lockdown started, where it caught you? Most of the people were yeah, I was in, in, Croatia. in I was, Croatia, I was in Split. Actually, since 1st of March, I was uh, almost all the time Split, uh, except two weeks I managed to go home in the end of June. And uh, that was it. Uh, we were supposed to do Palma and Year like uh, everybody else, but uh, I stayed there uh, for a long time. So you did not on purpose go to Palma because most of the people, like I think 80% of world fleet was caught in Mallorca and I remember the, the, the moment when the informations were spreading so randomly actually. Eventually within like two days the island got empty of sailors. Did you just resign from going there or you were just lucky not to travel? I mean our schedule was uh, having us to go there quite late, just a bit uh, before the racing begins of Princess Sofia Trophy and all this mess uh, happened before, so we were lucky that we were not caught to be there. And uh, yeah, that was the lucky part from us. So, And because usually I'm a bit late to book uh, air tickets <laughs> and these, sometimes they get more expensive, but this time I was lucky I didn't have to 
hassle with the mess of refunds and if you will get some or no, or rescheduling of flights. So that was good. <laughs> Is this a usual character of people from South Country to like take it easy and kind of do it last moment with the flow? I mean, flow, uh, when, I know, when I know the schedule and it's for sure and uh, there is no doubt about it, then I will plan in advance and uh, book the tickets. But you saw the situation, we were in Australia before for the World Championship in February and already there they were speaking a lot in the news about uh, Corona. So somehow it was a bit obvious that it was gonna come. It was not yet in Europe, but because I, I think we felt the impact of the media in Australia every day, they were speaking so much about it. Then it was kind of maybe you expected that uh, it will spread. Then it was Italy and then came all Europe and then America was last to catch it. And I mean, especially Americans, I think it was very obvious that it will happen. And yeah. once people travel and uh, the virus is so contagious, it shows that once you are not taking care 100%, the numbers just boom, one day, up. And then eventually we have a postponement of Olympic Games. Uh, did it somehow impact your life plans? We all passed through this strange phase when uh, events started being cancelled and uh, nobody knew what would happen. So you needed to keep uh, focus and, and train just in case because you know, it could easily be that they didn't postpone it. I think it was the right uh, call. Since a lot of athletes, uh, they were in different stages, lockdown, some they were out of lockdown, so it was not like fair for everyone and a lot of uncertainty to where the qualifications will be and all these uh, things. And now I think it seems that they will go with the games and we should be having in our mind that the games will uh, happen and be as ready as possible. You know, this is uh, to be after five years, not four, and uh, since of the delay, but uh, as a sport top level athlete, you should focus and expect that the games will happen. And if on the last moment things go bad, then okay, you did your best. There's nothing you can do about it. It's not, it's not our call if Olympic Games will uh, be held or not. And would you share your plans for after the hopefully 2021 Olympics? Are you staying racy? Yeah, I mean, I always like to see things as an Olympic cycle every four years. Now it will be five. I like to be fully committed. So I would like to finish uh, the Tokyo Games and uh, and see how things are. But then it's but, only three. So. Yeah, then it's only three, but I, I think the fire is still burning and I'm enjoying what I'm doing, so I should keep going. No, Once you're happy and you enjoy what you do, and uh, I don't see any reason why people should uh, quit. You know, I mean, you see Robert Shade, he's uh, 40, Slightly older 47 than years old <laughs> and now he's going for his seven Olympic Games. That's uh, really admirable and amazing. And, uh, that's inspiring and you are a very inspiring athlete yourself so good luck for the rest of the week here in Gdańsk and good luck for your uh, campaign. A little bit longer but uh, still hopefully very effective for you and successful. Thank you very much. Thank you.